reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas. He became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two. Joseph called Bar Sabbath, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry, an apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Messiah, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's read this psalm together responsibly by a whole verse. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seat of the scornful. Delight is in the law of the Lord. Meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff, which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. A reading from the first letter of John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. 
for this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus prayed, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them. 
and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. And for those of you who are on, watching on live stream, I'm going to apologize in advance. I haven't yet sorted out how I'm going to stand in one place uh, long enough to uh, preach, because I'm a walking preacher. <laughs> but please, you, you should be always able to hear my voice, and, and I'm sorry, I'm going to figure that out hopefully by next Sunday. So to all of you, I have a question. And please raise your hands, because this is a real question. Um, how many of you have ever thought for one moment that the world is such a mess, if only you could find a place where you didn't even know what was going on? Anybody? Wow, that's great. At least those of you will get this very much uh, when I tell you that today's gospel lesson uh, from the 17th chapter of John is um, known as the high priestly prayer. Um, and it is a prayer. Uh, Jesus is praying, and his disciples are supposedly listening. Um, and they find themselves in a situation where things are not good. It's about, as John is writing, it's about the end of the first century. Uh, things for the Jews and the Christians as an offshoot of Judaism are not at all good. The temple in Jerusalem has already been destroyed, and there is war um, and oppression everywhere you look, and they are pretty miserable, and some of them have already gone off to find a way off the grid. Now, in today's world, people do that all the time. There are a lot, I mean, they must be doing it all the time because on television, there, you can choose one of at least 50, if you include um, YouTube, you can find at least 50 programs about people living somewhere so remote that they have no electricity, they have no uh, running water, and they have to get their house built before the snow comes. The whole world is noisy and dangerous and causing all of us anxiety of one kind of an or another. And that's where, that is exactly where John is coming from. 
Now, from the beginning of Christianity, we've had Christian communities that allowed people to get away from the world. Monasteries. Um, they were g looking um, the caves that the de Desert Fathers lived in. They were looking for what the Essenes had found in the desert. The, the Jewish sect called the Essenes had left Jerusalem and gone out into the desert to live an isolated life of study and prayer. People want to do that still today, sometimes. Others of us just think about it every once in a while. But I think it's worth talking about because it allows us to see in real life something of what it means to be in the world but not of the world. And this is what Jesus is talking to his disciples about. And John is using this in his gospel to help him encourage his community to stay in the world and be the representatives of God, the holy representatives of God in this place. Don't go hide out somewhere where you can pray all by yourself. Stay here and be Christ to the world is the message that John is giving here. When he talks about being not being in the world, but not of the world. This is a lesson for all of us. This whole gospel lesson is a lesson for all of us. It's not only the high priestly prayer, but it's also a prayer of goodbye. And so I want you to stop and think for a moment. If you had one opportunity to tell the people you love what you want them to know, what you want them to remember, what would you say? What would you tell them? What kind of things would you want them to remember? What is so important that you could choose it to be the last thing you said? That's pretty much where Jesus is right now. This takes place just before the crucifixion. So let's think about what he says. And I want to just take a step back for a minute to talk to you about things that are set aside because it's important to, to see um, this situation of this gospel lesson through the eyes of you who know what it means to be set aside. When God chose the Hebrew people to be God's people, it wasn't because they were perfect people. It wasn't because they were holy people. It was because they were the people he chose. And they were set aside as special in God's eyes because they were the people he chose. Now, in this reading today, we hear about Jesus talking about those you gave me. I've taken care of those you gave me. I've taught those you gave me. And now I give them back to you to be cared for. They are those you gave me because God chose them. Now, it's true that Jesus called them, but God the Father had chosen them. We see that in other situations. David was chosen to be the king. But he wasn't some fabulous person. He was holy because God chose him. He didn't earn holiness by any means. David was not a holy person. He did some pretty horrible things but he was holy because he was chosen and he was set aside in holiness. When we talk about the, the Hebrew people being special and God had set them aside as holy because they were God's people and because God wanted them to love and, and cherish him in response for the love that he gave them. But they didn't earn that. They were God's choice. 
so were the disciples, the people who were following Jesus. So are we, the people who are following Jesus. And we're here because we've been chosen. We, cho we chose to believe, and that made us one of God's chosen. Now, this is not about who's not chosen. You, you recognize that, right? Anyone who chooses to believe becomes one of, a, a, one of this immense, immense number of chosen people following Jesus Christ. This is not about exclusion. This is about inclusion. But it's also about what are we going to do next? If we are the chosen followers of Jesus Christ, it isn't because we were so perfect that we deserved to be. It was because we agreed to be. God calls everyone to be his chosen. And if you agree to be a God, one of God's chosen, you sit here or someplace, someplace very much like this, someplace else in the world. So the question really is, as we sit here and we listen to this discussion, this gospel discussion about being in the world, but not of the world, what shall we do? Do you think about that when you, when you leave church? Do you think, well, that was interesting, so what does that mean I'm supposed to do? Do you ever think of that? So, you know, let me just tell you that I'm going to probably be here for a year, and you're going to hear me talk a whole lot about being co-creators with God of the kingdom of God in this place, and that's always our goal, to be co-creators with God of the kingdom of God in this place. And this place can be as small as the space you're standing on, or it can be as large as all the people that you know, or your neighborhood, or your block, or your church community, or your school community, or any other group of people you're part of. But how are we going to do that today in light of today's gospel lesson? And particularly this idea of being in the world but not of the world. And putting that in the context of Jesus' leave-taking. So, what do we need to remember of the things that Jesus has told us? If he was walking out the door this very minute, what would he have told us to remember? He would have told us to remember to love each other as he has loved them. But what in the world does that mean? Well, it's really incredibly simple. Jesus' love was always designed to make the person that he loved or to help that person that he loved become all that God had in mind when he was created. It's not at all about how much you like each other. It's all about empowerment. Jesus' love was empowering. If someone was broken, and couldn't become what God had in mind when he created them, then he fixed them. That would be healing. That was love. That was empowerment. That was to give them the life God had intended for them from the beginning of their creation. Every day when we come in contact with people that we know and strangers, we have this special commission to love them in that way. We have this special assignment to love them with that kind of empowering energy. So that would be one thing that we can do this week, even if you only pick out one person, to do some small thing for, to show them who they can be or to help them arrive at their goals or help them know what it means to think about what God wanted for me when I was created? You know, it wasn't an accident. Creation isn't an accident. 
And so there was a, a godly plan somewhere along the way, an expectation. Have I gotten there? Have I arrived? Heavens no. Have you? I doubt it. I ser- seriously doubt it, but I hope for that for you. I hope that every step you take is one increment closer to what God had intended for you. And that's what love is in Jesus' time. Can you think of something else that Jesus taught us? Anything that would be worth remembering? Come on, guys, loosen up. (laughs) Tell me what you think. What else did Jesus teach us that would be worth remembering? Somebody? Anyone? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. Yeah? You remember that one? That's an active thing. That isn't lie in bed and think before you go to sleep, I love God. Loving God with all your heart and soul and mind is taking care of the environment. It's growing the community in in goodness, bringing justice and harmony to your space. It's an incredible thing to think about when you wake up in the morning. What is it I can do this morning to love God with all my heart and soul and mind. It could be plant this package of seeds that are about to die in the package. It could be write a check to some not-for-profit you've been thinking about supporting because they do good works in our community. Maybe. Or at least we, we pray that they do. It could be, call your neighbor and ask how they're doing. It could be, send flowers to your mother. And it, on a day when it isn't even Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. Um, there's so many different ways that we can do these things. And there's so many other things that Jesus has taught us. But... Today's gospel lesson says to us, it matters that you remember those things. It matters that you make them part of your life. It matters that you plan around being that person who remembers. That's not easy. So sometimes we set up something that will help us remember. How many people have... One or more cellular telephone. Yeah? Anybody? Yeah. Almost everyone has a cellular cell phone. And it's really easy to set up a little bing that will remind you of something. Like remind you to go to the doctor. Or remind you that church starts in 20 minutes. Or whatever it is you want to be reminded of. How about a little ding that happens in the morning that says... Love God today with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. Why not? I mean, we get reminded of absolutely everything. You know, have your, don't forget to get air in your tires. Everything. We make a little reminder. This is not about today. This is about your whole life. As one of those people who is a follower of Christ in the place of the disciples. Just exactly like the disciples. The disciples were a small group. But Jesus sent them out. And historic, through history, we have replaced the disciples who generations and generations and generations of Christians have taken the place of the disciples as the followers of Christ. But Christ is still sending us out every day, every single day, sending us out. So I have to ask you to think, where am I going to go? And don't forget to shake the dust off your feet and get going. Amen.
We will continue with the creed. And um, I do this little thing about coming out here and turning around and facing the altar with you because that's east, or at least it's our liturgical east. The altar is always liturgical east, <laughs> if it, even if it isn't east. That's east, and we're going to face east, and we're going to read the creed, and so is every other Christian in the world. And this is the one thing that we all do, all denominations do it, we do it together, and it's one of those things that holds us together a little bit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Heavenly Father, you have brought us good news of great joy, first in the birth of your son, Jesus, and now in his resurrection from the dead. By the grace of your spirit, fill us, fill us with joy this day and every day. Risen Lord, you invite us to ask and receive that our joy may be complete. Teach, Teach us, us once, once again that our true joy, joy is in you, you and remind us that your redeeming love satisfies our deepest desire. desire. We pray for your holy Catholic Church Fill it with all truth. Where, where it is in error, direct, direct it. it. Where it where is right, strengthen, strengthen it. Where, where it is in want, want provide, provide for it. Where, where it is divided, divided reunite it. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. sacraments. Where there is war, conflict, or violence, Grant the gift of your peace. Where there is discord, fill your people with love. Pour out your Holy Spirit on the clergy, lay leaders, and members of St. Luke's Church and Iglesia El Buen Pastoral. That we, that we all may see what is possible as we seek to spread the good news of the gospel. Embolden us to go among those who are weary, burdened, sick, homeless, refugees, or in prison, that we may cross the boundaries that divide rich from poor, sick from well, and sinner from sin. Lord Jesus, pour out your comfort and love on those on our church's prayers. Those who are ill or injured, live with chronic disease, and those who grieve the death of a loved one. Let us pray for our own needs and the needs of others. 
temporal mothers, grandmothers, stepmothers, and mother-like figures in our lives. May God bless them abundantly, we pray to the Lord. For all those longing to be mothers, may you console them through their hard times and bless them with the gift of conception, we pray to the Lord. May we be inspired by Mary, our mother, to journey with Jesus in good times and in challenging times, we pray to the Lord. For children lost to miscarriage, abortion, disease, accident, or crime, gracious God, we come before you this day with honors and celebrate mothers and mothered people in pain and sorrow. We grieve the loss of our children, all precious human lives. Give your grace to those who grieve that they may find comfort in your presence and be strengthened by your spirit. Be with the families of this parish and the Durham community as they mourn and draw them together in your healing love. In the name of the one who suffered, died, and rose for us, Jesus our Savior. So a moment ago we were talking, I was talking about things that are set aside. And I want to please be seated. Just have a seat, please. And I I have to explain to you that holy water is not purer or cleaner or more efficacious or than the tap water that it is. It, when you when you fill a bowl with holy water. It's just the water from the tap. But it's being set aside for a holy purpose. And that's what makes it holy. It's not magic. It's not going to burn you, even if you're a witch. It's, it's just holy water. And so today, I especially would like to offer a blessing to everyone in the congregation. Those of you who are mothers, and those of you who have ever had a mother. So all of us think about our mothers on Mother's Day, whether the mother is still with us or not. Um, and so today, as I offer you this blessing in honor of our mothers, um, I hope you will receive it in that, in that same um, vein. <laughs> I don't want anyone to be left out. I don't know if it reaches that far, I can't tell. But if you want to raise your hand and tell me you didn't get any, if there were a whole bunch of little kids in this, in this congregation, everyone would be saying, I didn't get any, even though they might be standing there drenched. They definitely know how to receive a blessing, those kids. not to bless the organ with water. <laughs> yes. 
Now I need to tell you that earlier this week I asked if there was an asperger in the, in the sacristy. And I was told, no, we've never had one of those. And if you think that you're going to sprinkle this congregation with holy water, they're going to be really surprised. But maybe not mad. <laughs> and so I saw some smiles, and I'm really grateful for that. Thank you very much. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. That's the peace. Peace be with you. Please say it. God's peace. Peter, peace be with you. God's peace. Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. God's peace, Linda. Peace be with you. I'm going to get to hear about it. Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. God's peace. La paz del Señor. Peace be with you. God's peace. Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. God's peace. Lord, peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you, God. Peace be with you. God's peace. Peace be with you. You know, the blessing of having a lot of people in church is that we get to spend time being there. <laughs> Peace, peace be with you, Bill. God's peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. God's peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. God's peace. The peace of the Lord be with you, Julie. Connie. Peace. Alan, God's peace. Peace be with you, Alan. Peace be with you. Peace. God's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. Jennifer, peace be with you. You don't have to get up and walk. I'm coming. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Does anyone here remember? Peace be with you. 1979, when the new prayer book came out, and it said you're supposed to say the peace and say transmit your neighbor. Peace be with you. And there were screams and crying in the pews. I'm not ever going to touch that from since. Peace be with you. God's peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. Not least. Peace be with you. God's peace. Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. I'm going to come around. What? Well, I'm coming back. The peace of the Lord be with you. God's peace be with you. May the peace be with you. God's peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. God's peace be with you. 
Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Before we do that, I'm sorry, I'm lost. Before we do that, I do have some announcements, and I think a couple of other people have important announcements as well. Some information has gone out to you that says that the office is going to be closed at the, for three days this week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. It's even in your bulletin, but it's not altogether true. Um, it is true that Kay is gone, but I'm going to be here all three days. So if you call, I will try to answer the phone unless I've walked across to the other side of the building. Um, you can send me an email. My email address is on the back cover of your bulletin. Uh, next week, my cell phone number will be there as well. You're always welcome to call me anytime, night or day. Um, you cannot leave me a message, and the reason for that is you. Um, if you call me and leave a message in a pastoral emergency, you think I know, but I haven't listened to that message yet, and that's a problem. It's a problem that you think I know, but I haven't called you. Um, so please just call me back again, um, or send me a text, or both. Um, I want you to know when I know, and, and message machines keep me, keep, interfere with that. Um, so there's that. The office is not altogether closed. You're welcome to drop by. Um, sometime in about a week and a half, um, I will have a, an idea of what the rhythm of this place is, and I will tell you what my, my office hours will be. But I will be here every day except Friday, one way or another, some, some portion of those days, or all of them, depending on what I'm required to do, like diocesan meetings and things like that. Um, now, a couple of things. I grew up in South Texas. I'm not, I wasn't born in Texas, but I grew up in South Texas. And the Diocese of South Texas is um, a high church diocese, the second highest church diocese in the country after Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Um, and it seem, may seem strange to you that it, people down there are having incense and so forth in the heat of South Texas, but that's the truth. Um, now, I promise you, I won't ever have incense, but I do sometimes have blessings, as you just saw. And um, I'm not make, meaning for any of you to change the way you worship or your practices at all. Uh, if you see me do something that you don't do, don't think you have to do it, please. Um, I don't mean to change the nature of your church. Um, I just have to be aware that that's who I am, and you're somebody else. <laughs> we'll get, to, get along, I think, okay. The second thing I want to say about, in, in, by way of introduction, is that when I was asked to take this position, when you are an interim rector, the most common way that you have that job is if the bishop sends you to that church. So that's what has happened here. The bishop called me and said, will you take this job? I said to him, yes, but. And the but is that um, my two children and, my, um, and six of my grandchildren are all going to Alaska on June 1st, and we'll be back on the 19th, and I won't be here those weeks. And so when I came to talk to the vestry, I explained that, and I said I can start in June, like on the 20th, or I can start now and then be gone. And we decided that it might be nice for me to start now, because it'll give me three weeks to get a sense of not only what the joys are here, but what the challenges are as well. And then I'll have some time to think about that while I'm away. And I will be back and you will have supply proofs in the meantime. So I don't want you to think that I think that I should have as much vacation time as I have work time. Because it seems like I'm gonna work for three weeks and go away for three weeks and maybe you're expecting me to do that every month. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> and I really want to reassure you that I'm coming back to stay. Um, for pretty much a long time. 
anyway, at least for the year. And, um, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. So I know that our Deacon Kate has, um, has an announcement. Go first. Well, good morning. I'm Jean Cantor, the junior warden here at St. Luke's. I just have a few quick announcements. Um, first of all, I want to um, welcome our former organist and choir director, Jane Lynch, back to St. Luke's. <laughs> um, David Arcus, our organist, is away this morning, as is Kay Saunders who is attending a family wedding in Indiana. Um, also, um, just want to welcome those who are visiting in person or by live stream. We're glad you're with us this morning. And last, I would like to welcome the Reverend Susan Keedy as our interim rector. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. I hope you've had a chance to read about her um, varied background that she has um, accomplished and done over the years the, through the Episcopal Church, and that um, you'll take time to greet her at coffee hour. But I also realize people may have some Mother's Day reservations, so we may have to continue name tags again next Sunday. Okay. Yeah. But, um, In addition to what she says, I want to say that I have a, a kind of a, my theology is the theology of yes. If there's something you've always wanted to do since you've been at St. Luke's, please come see me because I'll probably say yes, almost certainly, unless it's illegal. Um, and we can get on with it. I'll help you find a way. on, I think. Let me know if you can't hear me. Yes, it's on. Great. Kate Wise, Deacon, hi. Um, welcome to our visitors. And those who know me, guess what? When she says yes, she means it. So when I was in New Orleans in March, I was at a book festival. It was a fantastic gathering. Did you all know that Susan graduated from Lucan, which is part of Chile now? So, great book festival. Um, Michelle Norris was speaking, and she was speaking about her Race Card Project, which is a 15-year-old endeavor to get people across the United States to talk about their impression. It, it started with note cards, postcards that she left in random places, race, six words or less, send your postcard in. 15 years she collected these postcards, um, and this is the result. She's written a book. Um, at that festival, she said, by the way, friends, I'm going to give away 12 of these books and dinner to the contest winner who writes the most compelling essay. Guess who wrote the most compelling essay? And three other groups, so I'm not special. Um, but we are joining a, a cohort of four. We have 12 books to share, to talk about our hidden conversations. We're going to start on Thursday, May 30th. We will have dinner. I have books to give, first come, first serve. Um, and folks, if everybody's excited about this, then we can buy more books, or you can buy a book at your favorite bookseller, and we can do a potluck. You can add to Ms. Norris's dinner. I'm excited about having this conversation. I'm excited about learning how you think we fit into Durham and how Durham is made up. So come tell me about a book. It's going to be a book study. And you, you really are going to enjoy it if you decide to participate. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
that we can look in for. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. 
and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your, from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in, sac in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable to him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Luke and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
a God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you today and remain with you always. Amen. I don't know how it happened, but for some, like, glorious reason, um, the final hymn today is my very favorite hymn. And so let's sing it with all the gusto we have. It's a gusto-filled song.
let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia.